Hello and welcome to my new studio in Kukubri. So we're going back to some lino cut printing as I'm going to be making a couple of new mini prints. But today I have to do a repair. Unfortunately, in the move, one of the lino cuts that I plan to teach with got damaged and cracked. I'm not sure how it happened and it was one of the very few casualties, so I shouldn't complain. So let me show you the print. I did some quick and dirty prints to show you the picture. They're not good prints, but here you can see this is High Force Falls in County Durham. And I have created a three block multi-block print using a direct copy of the sketch that I did at the falls. So here I have the print and if I work my way through the blocks, I'll just explain that. I created a line block and then from that line block, I created my color blocks. Now I'm not gonna show the process in this video, but I have videos coming up that will talk you through that process. So here is one of the color blocks and this gives some detail and you can see how that is still quite linear, but there's some detail there. And then I'm coming onto the block that really got damaged. And that was my background block. And here I have some background, but when this block was originally cut, there was this rather nice sky that went with it that was quite elaborate. And unfortunately it I just got broken. So what I've done is I've cut that sky off. I ran a scalpel around it and then peeled the lino back. Now I was able to do that because I have coated my backing board in packing tape, so transparent packing tape. And I made a video about this and I'll link to it in the description about how to reuse backing board with, with using parcel tape. So I was able to just peel that damage bit off and now I need to make a new sky for this block. So let me move those things out of the way and I'll show you how I'm going about it. What I did was to use this gully here in my background block to map out a fresh scrap of lino. And I also went to my other block, my line block, let me just get this in the right order, and I made a little tracing of the trees here because they go up into the sky, so they're going to impact anything that I do in the sky. And using carbon paper, I roughly transferred those to the right place. Now I haven't been totally precise about it because clouds go behind trees, so it doesn't really matter if there's a little bit of overlap, I just want to be aware of where those trees are. I also have marked the direction that I want my clouds blowing in because I would like them to blow in this direction because my tree is going in the opposite direction. So I like the tension between the two. Now that tree is not being blown in that direction. That, that is a growing thing. So um, I'm not trying to suggest the wind's going one way and the tree's going the other. So having done that, I now need to cut my lino and um, normally I would cut using a Stanley knife or a, a box cutter um, and I would just do a score and bend the lino, it would snap and then I'd score and cut through the backing. Here I've got an irregular shape, so what I've done is I have used a deep V tool, so um, let me just find the tool I used and I have cut with it. There we go. So I have a very deep um, V tool here and I have run a nice deep cut like so into my lino and then I can bend again and you can see it is snapping along that irregular line. So if you have to cut around a bendy shape, um, at least some of it can be done with a V tool and then bent and snapped and I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and cut along that line. So now I've got my scissors, all I need to do is just snip along where I have cut and bent the lino and that's going to allow me to have my sky cut the right way. Now I have put a little bit of carpet tape on the back of this 
just as an easy fix as we are filming. Normally I would use um, a flooring adhesive that's suitable for carpet tiles or cork flooring and with the packing tape on the backing block you can peel it off again even if it is stuck down with the flooring adhesive. But for now I am just going to use this double-sided tape to get it into place. So this is the sort of tape that you'd stick a vinyl floor down with. It's quite sturdy stuff. And I've made sure it goes over the entire back of the block because I'm going to be printing this on a printing press. And if I just used a bit of tape across the middle, there's always the danger that when I print on the printing press, because it exerts a lot of pressure on the lino, that little bit of tape would act as packing and you would end up with a dark ridge of ink where the tape was. So by covering it all over, I've, I've dodged that bullet. And now I'm just going to pop that into place where I want it. I don't have to square it up because there are no straight edges on this print. So I'm just giving myself enough lino to put a cloud or two in the sky. So if we go back to the print that I did here, you can see that the print is very graphic and linear. It's a little bit more graphic than I would normally do, but I thought it would be quite fun to do something that was all about lines, because if you've ever been to Hard Force, the rocks there are amazing and they're really bold and they're quite boxy as well. I don't know what rocks they are. Maybe if anybody knows, you could say in the comments, but they're very strong graphic shapes. So I've tried to keep that linear feel in the print and I'm going to try and get that in the clouds as well. So all the way through with my detail, I have been working Here's the background again, and I've been working with these lines and just keeping everything very bold and blocky in this print, which is not my usual style, but I thought it'd be fun to try something a little bit different and something that related to that heavy, thick pencil sketch that I did originally. So when it comes to marking out the clouds, I am going to use these white pencils. They are made by Stabilo, and this is described as um, a marker for paper, glass, plastic, and metal. I would know it as a china graph, and they're sometimes called grease pencils as well, and I find these great for marking out. My lino is stained already, and it's stained with acrylic ink, and again, I have made films about staining lino, so I'll, I'll link those as well. So I want some linear clouds, so I'm going to start off marking where I think I want them to be. And at this stage, I am just doodling away. I quite like the idea of there being nice wavy clouds. If I don't like them, then I'm just going to use a bit of lick to change that. Or you could use a damp cloth. I've forgotten to bring a damp cloth, so I'm just using a little bit of alteration. Um, and here we go, just marking out the edges of those clouds. and where I want them. So at the moment it's looking very scribbly, but I'm going to start editing now into the shapes that I do like. And this is how I tend to draw. So I scribble a lot and then I start refining down the cloud areas that I do like. And all the time I'm doing this, I'm bearing in mind that in this instance, I'm going to be dealing in lines, not in um, brush marks or washes of color. So I have to think about how this works in a linear way. So I'm just drawing away. And if you want to get some ideas for this, I always find that wood engravings are very useful to look at because wood engravers often work in um, very, very intricate cutting and pattern making, and there are, there's always good inspiration for working in line. Um, I had a look last night to see if I saw any clouds I like, and I did indeed see several. So that's, that's given me some ideas here that I'm working with. So I'm now 
at the point where I quite like these. Now I know that the trees are here, so basically all this detail is a bit irrelevant, but it, I can't just have my cloud stop where the trees start because um, that's not how life works. But what I won't do is cut like masses of detail behind here because you simply won't see it. So now I've got it kind of where I want to. I'm going to go in with just an ordinary pencil to put down the lines that I'm going to cut around. Now, normally I wouldn't use pencil because pencil's very good at transferring onto the print when you, when you print with it, um, particularly with the oil-based inks that I use. But here, I'm going to cut everything away except the lines and then I can clean the block. It's not like I need the image to stay on this block throughout a reduction print. This is a multi-block, so I'm just looking to have those edges. So now I'm going to carefully put the pencil marks on that I'm going to use as my cutting guide. So now I've got my outline drawn. I Some of these lines are wrong and I will change them as I cut, but I now have my cloud shapes. And I've made these nice big fat pencil lines in keeping with the fat lines of the rest of the print. In another print that I'm going to show you on here shortly, you can see I've done some really fine clouds. So that's a completely different style um, of cutting and this print's going to be very different in style from my bold graphic print here. So I've got my lines on and now I'm going to cut and I'm going to begin by roughing out some of the big shapes and then I'm going to move in with smaller tools and isolate those lines.
So I have been working and finished cutting the clouds and I have just run off a quick print, again a very bad proof, just to show you what I've managed to do with the clouds. So you saw me draw them and then you saw me start to cut them and as I've been cutting them I've been playing with the cutting out so that there is more detail than I drew on the clouds that's in there. If you really want to see some marvellous graphic style clouds then you need to look at the work of Brian Angus. I've mentioned him before, that's Brian with a Y and he makes marvellous lino cuts um, that are a good example of this style. Um, and this is, as I say, not my usual style, but I feel like it works very well with the drawing and the kind of graphic quality of high force. So I also did a quick print with some paler ink before I did the darker one so that you could see very clearly how that pencil will lift and transfer, which is why I wouldn't normally use a pencil um, to do my drawing on lino, especially if I wasn't going to clean it off before printing because it does tend to make a mess. So in the next video or two I'm going to look at good printing versus bad printing for this print and this print is going to become one of my mini prints so it will be in my website shop very shortly. Um, and I will give you a heads up about that in the next film. So if you would like to see the journey through this print and the next one, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you've enjoyed the video, press the like button, and I hope I'll see you in the studio again soon.